So you go on view, proof setup. Uh, view is in the top of the Photoshop, proof setup, then on custom. And when you go on custom, you click on device to simulate. And then you go down, it's in the middle on dot 25, uh, dot gain 25%. For me, it's control Y, and then it changes basically black and white to color. Also in terms of working, a little tip from my side, what I like to do, and especially um, for characters, I also do it on environments, but mostly on characters, when I work, I like to have this open twice, and I don't use the navigator on purpose, because when you use the navigator, let me open the navigator here, so you have the little navigator here, right, which functions like a, a thumbnail, but the problem is, if you zoom in, you also zoom in here, which is something I don't want. So I prefer to just go on Window, Arrange, and then when you go on the lower end, there you see all the Photoshop files, and actually the one you have clicked, and then I basically just open it again, and then all I do, I drag it to the side and make it as small or big as I want it, you know? Because when I go in then and work here on this, I still see the whole character. You know, if I change something and I do it, and then I see it simultaneously. And this is just helping to have still the overview of that. By the way, the changes look really cool. Just make sure that all this stuff here doesn't become too, too dark in values or too muddy. You know, especially when it comes to the cloth here, because if it if, if it is cloth, then we have a slower transition in values because it's not very reflective, right? It's it's uh, very absorbing, absorbs all the light. So make sure that these transitions are slower. So even if it's dirt, and this is also the, the struggle with dirt, when you add dirt, then you can also add, make it too noisy at some point. And this is something we don't want. We want to avoid it to make it unnecessarily um, noisy. Same goes for um, light and shadow shapes. So this is an interesting part. Uh, you remember all the stuff we talked about now about shape design and shape language and everything, right? Guess what? We also have this in light and shadow shapes. You can also shape design these shapes, especially light shapes and shadow shapes. I would also say if you do that, focus first on the light shape because also angle and light um, dictates the shadow shapes. Even if you build something with, um, let's say with clay, you sculpt something, then you start to build a form and this form can also tell you a little bit already when light is hitting, what type of shape do they create, right? If you have something super angular, you have a lot of sharp edges and then you have a lot of sharp shadow shapes, cast shadows, right? Um, and this is the same thing. If you have something round, then something can be super soft. And the question, is it what you want? Is it something soft or is it something more aggressive? Do you want to have something aggressive? So this is a, um, this is really fun to, to do. Here we need to be a bit careful with the color feel. Um, on the back side it looks a bit too short. Also here the back side arm looks it also a little bit too slim compared to the front arm. You went over the cell shading, right? You went into rendering it. You can also start now to really dissect and decide where you want to keep the black outline and where not. Because what I would suggest is just using it as an ambient occlusion shadow rather than having something like a super dark black outline. No, because it creates a lot of contrast, especially when you have something super bright like this material. If it's a cut line or something, a sewing line, that can also be a thing, you know, like this is really nice here with the sewing line, makes total sense. Then just make sure that if you have something like this, that this is covered correctly, because it changes readability. I also know that some people, they use these lines on overlay, so they only affect by the shadows, so they use it as a shadow layer, so to speak. If you have trouble with certain forms and um, light casting, for example, uh, you can also make super quick blender sculpts or mockups, just to see if you have a very complex form, how is the light shape? Because this can be very daunting to render, because you really need to understand every single edge and every single form. And to a certain level, you see if it works, but sometimes you see that there is a lot of stuff missing, you know? So so everything has a gradient, right? So light is, because light is traveling, especially when we have edges and we have basically an edge which is blocking light, and then there's bounce light from the other side, 
which means there will always be a gradient. But everywhere is basically a gradient because we always have to transition. This is something we cannot forget in the rendering. Something I'm trying to incorporate more in my work too is, uh, especially on the color layer, like if I'm doing this whole like multiply shadows, color dodge highlights, on the color layer, um, I kind of want to make sure that colors are bouncing off each other, mm -hmm. depending on where the light is hitting. So like, um, sometimes a, a material will be influenced by another one and take on some of that color just because the, the bounce light. I'm just trying to use that as well. That's, that's, that's great. Just make sure it's not distracting from the necessarily thing you want to communicate. In production, we want to communicate the idea of the concept, which is often information like material, um, how is it built, how is it made. If we add too much of an artistic note to that at a certain point, can be a bit of distraction, right? Versus you have to paint an illustration which has to be fantastical. Then the artistic keynote to that can be way bigger. It is also has to do with experience, right? Is it time to warm light and very cool shadows to make it like very contrasty color, coloristic wise? Or is it just make it sense if I just simply render it down and just communicate, okay, this is metal, this is leather, this is cloth, etc., etc. Yeah, um, yeah, that makes sense. This, like, we started basically from ground up with this character, right? And also with the, with the process of learning character design. Um, and regarding the whole, like, teaching me you this thing and the learning process for you, what would you say was the, bis the biggest um, takeaways from um, doing that? A lot of, like, character design discoveries, like, I, I always knew that color, shape, value were always very important, but even more so now, just really trying to make sure things look graphic, just uh, really creating a workflow for myself, which I never had. Like, now I know, you know, how I like to do my lines, and, you know, fill those colors in and render if I need to, and so I think that's super beneficial. Instead of scrambling, you know, whenever it comes to getting my first job, uh, I'm gonna know what I'm doing. Every, every, every time I look at your stuff, it's better and better, so... I mean, it's also credit to you because you need to do the work, right? That's, I'm just showing you the way, that's good. So you would recommend the mentorship, I guess? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. You know, especially if you're a self-taught artist, it's, it's, you need it. You need some uh, guidance, uh, accountability, you know, um, or, or even just creating a project with, with someone else, bouncing ideas. Mm. I'm happy you say that. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe. If you also want to get mentored by me, make sure to check out my website, janoschmannesart.zone and apply for the mentorship. Otherwise, see you in the next video. Take care. Ciao, ciao.